Hey guys, my name is Kush, and uh, as you already know, in order to drive for Uber Black or uh, any limo services, you have to have TCP. There are many people who ask me, uh, what is TCP, how to get TCP? I personally rent a car, so I don't have TCP, I didn't go through all of that, but I, uh, I uh, keep looking on, on Google how to do it and uh, all the process that it requires to in order to get TCP. So I found this uh, amazing website uh, that's called HollywoodLimousine.com and uh, I think they are, they are a limousine company and I think they have been in the business for a long time and they have a really good article that I want to go with through this article with you guys and uh, let's see what it requires. It looks like a lot of work but as we can see here they also the if you need help also they can help you out I'm not affiliated with them I have no idea who they are but this is something that I found on Google that looks legit let's go through it the first thing uh, the first thing is always how much it will cost so they uh, wrote everything about the cost the number one is uh, getting professional help with the process so depending on your experience and how long you are willing to wait the easiest way to protect your investment and ensure that there are no mistakes are made in the PUC filing which will slow the process down help is available to ensure the process is done right the first time click here to fill out the form and one of our experts will get back to you so let's click on it and see how it, how it looks like you put your name, your email, your phone number. Do you have a commercial registered vehicle? No, you know, any other information? And you click send. And uh, I'll mention again, I'm not affiliated with them. I have no idea who they are. So if you really need it and ask, ask them go through the process and uh, maybe they will help them. And the cost is from 500 to $1,000. The second one is setting up business they, uh, depending on what type of business re registration you decide upon these costs can vary between about $300 for a DBA which stands for doing business as to several thousand dollars for an S Corp or LLC number three commercial insurance this is just an estimate price as your location driving record and of course the vehicle that you choose will greatly affect the price Talk to your commercial insurance agent to get an accurate quote, and they uh, their quote is uh, approximately five hundred five hundred dollars per month. In my opinion, uh, from what I heard from other people who do it, it's close to a thousand dollars. And the next one is acquiring a commercially registered vehicle. They estimated five thousand dollars. I have no idea why. If you want to save money in the beginning, we suggest getting a vehicle that you can use for a new limo business, but not something outrageously expensive. You can always add that uh, Escalade ESV that I like, BMW 7 Series, Sprinter limo or 40 passenger party bus later in the process. To make it easier on yourself, you can find a late model MKT for around 5k. If you get one that is already registered commercially, you will thank me later. MKT, from what, under, uh, what I know, is qualifies only for Uber Black, not not SUV. Around 5K, I don't understand what how this number came here. Maybe they mean five five thousand dollars per month. It's pretty expensive. Maybe I don't know how uh, how many months of financing is that. If uh, it is maybe 12 months, then I understand. But it all depends actually for how long you, you take it, 48 hours if you get a loan or 72 for 48 months or 72 months. The next one, the next one is PUC filing fees, $1,000 up to $1,500. Depending on what type of certificate or permit you need based on what services you want to offer to your customer, you can find a list of a different certificate and uh, permits available for for the PUC here 
give more complete data in section A. So depending on what kind of TCP you get, there are TCP A, TCP B, C, and so on. When you go down, we'll look at them. And then DMV pool notice, five dollars, not a big deal. And then commercial vehicle uh, weight and certificate is twenty dollars. And what I say is, as you can uh, plainly see, the costs are not outrageous. The total cost to start should be under ten thousand dollars, even if you don't have a vehicle yet. If you already own the vehicle, your cost should be around $5,000, not financed or leased. Okay, they mean if if your car is not financed or leased. Again, keep in mind we are suggesting you to start the process with one driver and uh, one inexpensive vehicle. Okay, got it. So let's go through the checklist. Register your business begin the DMV pool notice program, get a vehicle to use for TCP registration, weigh your vehicle, get the vehicle registered commercially, acquire commercial vehicle insurance, apply for your permit in the PUC, Public Utilities Commissions, find an authorized drug testing facility, complete the TCP application process with the PUC, apply for airport permit. All right, let's start with the registered business. In order to get your TCP number, you must be own business. There are many resources to research or get the help you need. There are several different types of companies to choose from, and all of them have different attributes and benefits. Talk to your uh, lawyer or tax advisor to find out which type of com uh, company is best suited for your business. In California, there are many types of businesses to choose from, Deciding which is best for you can be a doubting experience. Here is a list from the California Secretary of State website. Corporation, Limited Liability Company, Limited Partnership, General Partnership, Limited Liability Partnership, Sole pro pro Proprietorship, <laughs> I cannot say it. This is the bottom line of the first step in the acquisition of your TCP number. If you don't know what to choose, help you is easily available. They are telling about the help that they provide. From what I understand is the easiest way to go is LLC, limited liability company or corporation, which can be S Corp or C Corp. Number two is DMV pool notice. In order to acquire a TCP number, it is paramount that you enroll in the DMV pool notice program. The California Department of Motor Vehicle, which Chase DMV, checks all drivers on your registration to ensure that anyone driving for a company has a valid driver license and a clean record. We recommend simply adding yourself at this point to keep it simple. You can add other drivers easily once the process is complete. All right, number three, get a vehicle to use for your TCP registration. This part can be a little bit complicated as the vehicle must be registered commercially. Many people call us and ask if they can use a vehicle that is currently financed and registered as a private vehicle. This will not work. If you are following our steps, you are now a business owner and the vehicle must be registered to the business as a commercial vehicle. Here are the possible scenarios and how to deal with them. Okay, I have a pink slip for my vehicle and I said I have own it. Easy, if you want to use a vehicle that you already own and is registered as a personal vehicle, this can be done and it is quite simple. If the vehicle does not have any finance company on the pink slip and registration, simply go to your local DMV office with proof that you own the business and transfer the registration from your name to the business name. And if here is the thing that uh, I heard it uh, somewhere from uh, from someone on YouTube and he said that if you transfer your personal vehicle into business uh, vehicle it it means that basically you are selling your vehicle to your business and you have to pay tax on it I'm not professional it is something to keep in mind they didn't mention it here maybe it is B my personal vehicle is financed complicated it may, if you make monthly payments to a finance company you are going to have to jump through some hoops the easiest way is to pay off the finance 
company and get the title to the, to the vehicle. If you cannot afford to pay off the vehicle, you will need to transfer the loan to your biz new business and uh, make the loan a commercial loan. This can be extremely difficult if you don't have perfect credit score. Complicated, right? C. I don't have any vehicle. Simple. If you, if you want to finance your new vehicle, it must be financed to your new company and be a commercial loan or lease. If you want to pay cash for the vehicle, make sure you register it to your company as a commercial vehicle. Buying a used vehicle for cash and register, registering it to your company is the easiest way to go and uh, will save you a lot of headaches moving forward in the process. I don't think people who are trying to be a limo drivers have that much of cash. Even if you have a beautiful brand new SUV that is registered to you personally, it may be a lot easier for you to spend a few thousand dollars on a used vehicle and register that vehicle to your new company. Once you have your TCP number, adding and removing other vehicles is a lot easier. All right. Number four, weighing your vehicle. To acquire a commercial registration on any vehicle, you must provide a certificate to the DMV with the unladen weight of the car or truck. We recommend doing this as soon as you decide what vehicle you are going to use for your TCP permit. To get the unladen weight of your vehicle, simply go to a public scale near you that provides documentation for the DMV. Okay, we'll click here. Let's see where it brings us. Oh, sounds public scale. They have it everything here. All right, no problem. There is a nominal fee associated uh, with the weighing the vehicle and getting the weight certificate. This is probably the easiest part of the entire process. Do not go to the DMV to register your, register your vehicle commercially without the certificate of um, unlaid weight, or you will have to, to make a return trip to the DMV. All right, number five, get your commercial registration. The vehicle type is 31 inch, indicates a commercial vehicle under 11,500 pounds. We strongly recommend this type of re registration for your first vehicle. If you would like to use other type of livery vehicles in the business, such as large party buses or the like uh, we, the large party buses or the like, wait until you have your TCP number and add those type of vehicles later. The vehicle is registered to the business, not pictured. If the vehicle is not registered to the business, you will not be able to complete the process with the PUC. Unladen wait in order to register any commercial vehicle with the DMV, the vehicle must be weighed by a certificate vehicle weight station as noted in the item 4. Just went through this. Number 6. Acquiring commercial automobile insurance. When do I need to get my commercial insurance? This is a good question. We don't. Uh, you don't need commercial vehicle insurance until you submit your initial application to the PUC. Your pool notice will take about 30 days until you will not be able to drive any passengers until you receive your completed TCP number. You can register a vehicle commercially as long as the vehicle has any kind of liability insurance. Commercial insurance is very exp expensive and you certainly must acquire commercial insurance to transport passengers in California. To save you some money in the beginning, we recommend holding off until everything above this point has been completed and you are ready to send in your application to the PUC. The last thing to do before you send in your application to the PUC is the acquisition of commercial insurance for your new limo company. Again, we, rec we suggest you wait until you have completed the DMV pool notice program and have received all the pool notice from the DMV. We highly recommend getting your commercial insurance from someone that is an expert in dealing with the library business. 
or a livery business. Again, this will save a lot of headaches and time as your application will be delayed if you make any mistakes on the insurance process. Do I need worker compensation insurance? If you have taken our advice up to this point and only have one driver at that, and that one driver is also the owner of the company, the answer is no. If you have multiple drivers and any of them are not and any of them are not officers in the company that the then the answer is yes you do need worker compensation this is complicated i don't understand clearly speak to one of our insurance professional okay they're promoting with their stuff at this point oh this is this is the uh the way to to ask them for help all right we looked it up all right, guys, number seven is filing an initial application for TCP with the Public Utilities Commissions. Everything here, there are uh, so two type of, uh, there are many types of TCP. The first one is A certificate, TCP A, and the B certificate, TCP B. The one that is in my car that I rent is TCP B. So I will leave the link for this uh, for this website uh, in the comments below so you can read the differences. I have no idea which one to choose, but what I know is certificate A is $1,500, certificate B is $1,000, and any other uh, certificates are $1,000. And uh, here it says, note, if you will perform interstate transportation such as transfer to Las Vegas, you will need a DOT interstate per permit. Number eight is to find authorized drug testing facility where you you do drug testing, and after the after a paperwork has been sent to the PUC, it's time to wait. Over the years, the PUC moves at different speeds depending on their budget and demand. In about 30 to 60 days, you will get a notice that uh, they want you to enroll into a drug testing program for your registered drivers. Contact drug testing. And uh, provide, provided there are no problems with the, with the drug testing, your application should be approved and you will receive your TCP permit or certificate in 30 to 60 days. All right, congratulations, you got your TCP permit. And number nine, then the last one is apply for permits to service your local airports. At this point, you are no le legal to drop off passengers at just about any airport in California, you are also legal to pick up passengers at most airports. However, many California airports do not let TCP careers, uh, careers pick up arriving passengers without a special permit specific to the airport. Some airports do not let you enter at all. In Los Angeles, LAX, John Wayne, and Ontario airports all require a special permit for pickups. Burbank Airport, Bob Hop, does not have any such requirements. It is important to check, uh, to check with any airports you plan on servicing to find out their specific licensing guidelines and the associated, associated costs. Many small limo companies attempt to pick up passengers at airports prior to receiving and paying for the licensing. If caught, the results are disastrous. The fines are huge and they may arrest your driver and impound your vehicle. All right, that's it guys. I hope that you got the value from this. The link will be in the descriptions. And again, I'm not associated with this website. I'm not uh, affiliated with this website. So this is important information that I found important and I learned a lot. I wanted to share it with you guys. If you like this video, please give it a like. And if you want to watch a video which YouTube suggests you or the playlist about Uber Black Earnings right here. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, guys, and see you in the next video. Bye.